Section 5.4 is about how to solve a rational equation, which is just an equation that has a rational expression in it, or more often, multiple. So like this one right here that I put in as the example, that's got three. And usually that's what you end up with. You end up with ones that have two or three. That's, I mean, that's not abnormal whatsoever. Another thing that's going on with that one that's the example is if you look at the denominators, the denominator of the expression on the right is the product of the two denominators on the left. That also has a tendency to show up, especially in this section. So we're going to see a bunch of that in these examples, and you'll see it in the homework too. So what do you have to do to solve a rational equation? Um, if the first thing that you're thinking about is like the, like the way that you clear fractions, um, that you do something like that, so then that way you clear the denominators out. Um, that's the right idea. Um, the only other thing I would add to that is um, make sure that you're not ending up with extraneous solutions. So that's why the first step is to check for any restrictions. So anything that would make a denominator zero, because then those values couldn't be solutions at the end. Um, then um, finding the least common denominator and multiplying both sides by that, that would clear the denominators out then you're going to end up with probably either a linear equation or a quadratic equation to solve. And we've had both of those before in chapters that we've already done. So the solving, like once you've got the denominators cleared out, that tends to not really be too bad. And then the last thing, checking for extraneous solutions, it's just basically check the solutions that you get against whatever restrictions you've got in your domain. So make sure that if you get one that is a restriction domain that you throw it out, basically. All right, so then this first one, if we're gonna solve this, so first things first, restrictions on the domain, I suppose. So, so for restrictions, let's see. Based on the, um, the one that's on the left, we couldn't have x be negative six, right? Um, because you'd say, well, then x plus 6 can't be 0, which would mean that x can't be negative 6. And then 2x plus 3 can't be 0. And if you solve that, you would get that x is, is or I guess x can't be negative 3 halves. All right, so then our domain... would be the set of all x such that x is not equal to negative 6 and x is not equal to negative 3 halves. All right. So at the end, when we get our answers, we just have to make sure that they're not either of those restrictions. So then the next thing is the least common denominator. Well, those two denominators are factored all the way out, so it looks like we just have to use the product. So the least common denominator would be x plus 6 times 2x plus 3. So then what we're going to do is multiply both sides by the least common denominator. So we'll end up with x plus 6 times 2x plus 3 times x plus 1 over x plus 6 equals x plus 6 times 2x plus 3 times 2 times x minus 5 over 2x plus 3. And then we're going to get some cancellation because on the left you'd be able to cancel the x plus 6 in the denominator with the x plus 6 that's out front. And then on the right, you cancel the, x, the 2x plus 3 in the denominator with the 2x plus 3 that's out front. So what you would end up with then would be 2x plus 3 times x plus 1. And then on the right, you're going to have x plus 6 times 2 times x minus 5. But I'm going to multiply that out as 2x minus 10. So I'm just going to distribute the 2 first. Then that way we're just foiling on both sides. So if we do that, if we FOIL the left side, it looks like that's going to be 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. 
And then on the right side, that's going to be 2x squared plus 2x minus 60. All right. And then notice the x squared terms have the same coefficient. So this is actually going to be a linear equation because then if we subtract 2x squared on both sides, we're going to end up with 5x plus 3 equals 2x minus 60. And if we solve this all the way, so I guess subtract 2x from both sides, so we get that 3x plus 3 equals negative 60. Um, then if you subtract 3 from both sides, um, you'd get that 3x was negative 63. And then lastly, 3x over 3 equals negative 63 over 3. So it looks like the x is negative 21. And that is what we're supposed to get here. Um, and then just to check, negative 21, is that a restriction? No, because the restrictions were negative 6 and negative 3 halves. So negative 21 is fine. Um, and if you wanted to go through and do a, a check, um, just to make sure that all the algebra is right, we can do that. So I've got the space over here for it. So if I do a check, um, I think the easiest thing to do is do the left side and the right side separately and just make sure that you get the same thing. So then on the left side, we've got, so if x is negative 21, we'd have negative 21 plus 1 over negative 21 plus 6. So that's going to be negative 20 over negative 15, but then it looks like that's going to be 4 thirds, right? Because you could say, well, that's negative 5 times 4 over negative 5 times 3, so that's just 4 thirds. All right, then we just have to make sure that the right side is also going to be 4 thirds. So let's see, if we sub in, um, in the original equation, we'd have 2 times negative 21 minus 5 over 2 times negative 21, and then plus 3. All right, so then the numerator is 2 times negative 26, and then the denominator here is going to be negative 42 plus 3. So that's negative 52 over negative 39, but then both of those are divisible by 13, so it's negative 13 times 4 over negative 13 times 3. So that's four thirds. Good, they match. So there, we could fit the check in over on that side of the page, so I figured we might as well. Um, but that's pretty much what we're gonna do. They do get a little bit more complex, like if you have three denominators, or um, you know maybe if you do have an extraneous solution or something. So there are other things that can happen, um, but they're all basically gonna come up within the next few examples here. So. With four, or not with four, I looked at the four, I meant to say two. Um, so I looked at that four in the numerator. With number two, um, at least the, the restriction on the domain's easy, right? The only thing that B can't be is zero. So, all right, then the domain would be set of all B such that B is not equal to zero. And then the other thing, is the least common denominator. Um, well, here that would be the least common multiple of 3b, 6b, 2b, and 3. Um, so I guess we could factor the 6b. So 3b is just 3 times b, right? We can't really do anything with that. But 6b, we could say that's 2 times 3 times b and then 2b and 3. So it looks like it's 2 times 3 times b. That would cover the other ones, right? Because that's got a 3 and a b, that's got a 2 and a b, it's got a 3. So um, it looks like our least common denominator is going to be 2 times 3 times b, which is usually just called 6b. So then going back over here, if we multiply both sides by 6b, we'll have 6b, and I guess I'm going to write this where it's already distributed. 
So 6b times 4 over 3b plus 6b times 1 over 6b equals 6b times 7 over 2b plus 6b times 1 third. And then we can kind of simplify those. We can multiply them out. We're going to have that 24b over 3b plus 6b over 6b equals uh, 42b over 2b uh, plus 6b over 3. So 24b over 3b, that's 8, right? Since the b's are going to um, divide out, that's just 24 over 3. 6b over 6b is 1. Then 42b over 2b is 21. And then that last expression is a 2b, because in that one, 6 divided by 3 is 2, but then you still got a b there. Um, so solving this doesn't look that bad, right? You've got that 9 is 21 plus 2b. And then if you subtract 21 from both sides, you'd get that negative 12 is equal to 2b, which means that it looks like b is going to be negative 6. Right? Or... I think the way the homework likes this written is something like this, where if you say the solution is the set consisting of just negative six, something like that. All right, so that takes care of two. I guess there we actually did have to, um, I guess, think about the least common denominator a little bit, but notice how clean this ends up working. Like once you get down to, I just need a different color here. Like once you get here, like, from there down, it's pretty simple, right? Like, I would say probably 90% of the work is before the brown arrow, right? Like, that's where the work is. It's figuring out what the least common denominator is and then uh, multiplying that um, through on both sides and simplifying. Because then the, the solving is just a linear equation. That doesn't really look like it's that bad. And a lot of times that's what you get, um, that the actual solving part, um, once you've got you know, all of the denominators cleared out. It's just not anything that's too crazy, which is nice, right? I mean, like, better that than something that is crazy. So um, I think with number three, we also end up with one that's linear. Um, I guess we're going to find out. So first things first, um, I guess we'd be looking for uh, restrictions on the domain. Um, but notice that the denominator on the left is the product of the two denominators on the right. So that's not going to create any extra restrictions then, right? So um, I'm just going to try to section off number two here. So then with number three, we can say, well, that's really 6 over x plus 4 times x minus 1 equals 3 over x minus 1 minus 2 over x plus 4. And so then our restrictions, we only have two of them, right? x can't be 1, x can't be negative 4. So the domain would be the set of all x such that x is not equal to 1 and x is not equal to negative 4. And then the other thing is the least common denominator. But if you look at what the denominators are, it looks like it would just be x plus 4 times x minus 1, right? Because we've got that product, then x minus 1, then x plus 4. So, I mean, the thing that would be the least common multiple of those three quantities is just the first one. It's the x plus 4 times x minus 1. So that's just going to be x plus 4 times x minus 1. And so then going back over here, if we're going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator, so then we're going to have x plus 4 times x minus 1 times 6 over x plus 4 times x minus 1. Um, then that'll be equal to x plus 4 times x minus 1 times 3 over x minus 1. 
minus x plus 4 times x minus 1 times 2 over x plus 4. And then we can cancel some things, right? And the, the one on the left, we can cancel all kinds of things because we can cancel the x plus 4s and we can cancel the x minus 1s. Um, on the right side, the first one, we can cancel x minus 1s. second one, we can cancel x plus 4s. So we're going to end up with something, again, that is linear because all we're going to have on the left side is a 6. On the right, we're going to have 3 times x plus 4 from that first product and then minus 2 times x minus 1 for the second. So then, let's see, we got to distribute the 3 and we'll have 3x plus 12 and then minus what we get when we distribute the two. So be careful here, make sure you subtract the whole thing. So I'm gonna put it in brackets for that reason. So minus two X minus two, all in brackets like that. And then if I distribute the negative, I'll have three X plus 12 minus two X plus two. So then six is gonna be equal to X plus 14. And so then that means that if you subtract 14 from both sides, looks like what you're gonna get is that negative eight is equal to x. And so then the solution would be the set consisting of just negative eight. All right, because the negative eight's okay, right? That didn't end up being a restriction on the domain, right? It's not one, it's not negative four, so we're fine. It looks like that really is our answer. Okay, um, so you know it's coming. Um, and it's coming soon because we have two more of these type of questions on the next page, and then there's a word problem. So you think this is probably coming before the word problem. So one of these ones on the next page, I would expect an extraneous solution. I would also expect one of them to be quadratic because we haven't had that yet. So let's see what happens here. All right, so first of all, um, once again, we've got the denominator that's the product of the other two denominators. So now it's the one that's on the far right that's the product of the first two that show up because you could rewrite that as three over x minus two equals two over x plus three plus 15 over x minus two times x plus three. So then our domain, just like the last one, it just, you know, two doesn't work, negative three doesn't work, and that's it. So the domain will be the set of all x such that x is not equal to two, and x is not equal to negative three. All right, then our least common denominator, I mean, if you look at those three denominators, um, it's just gonna be that third one, right? I mean, that one would cover the first two, so, our least common denominator is gonna be x minus two times x plus three. Okay, so then going back over here, if we multiply both sides by the least common denominator, so at this point, this kind of looks like number three, right? Um, to a very large extent, but we're gonna have x minus two times x plus three times three over x minus two, and that would be equal to x minus two times x plus three times two over x plus three plus x minus two times x plus three times 15 over x minus two times x plus three. All right, we should be able to cancel some things. So let's see what we can do. All right, on the left, we cancel out the x minus twos. Um, let's see, on the right side, first one, you get the x plus threes, and then the last one, you can do all kinds of stuff. All right, so let's see what we got. We have got three times x plus three on the left. Then on the right, we've got two times x minus two, and then plus 15 right? That last product is just going to be a 15 now with everything canceled out. So if we distribute the 3 on the left, distribute the 2 on the right, we're going to get 3x plus 9 equals 2x minus 4 plus 15. So we've got that 3x plus 9 equals 
2x plus 11. And if we solve this, then let's see what happens. Well, um, you would subtract 2x from both sides, right? And then you'd get that x plus 9 equals 11. If you subtract 9 from both sides, you get that x equals 2. However, that's one of our restrictions, right? That's, the, that's outside of our domain. Because if x is 2, a couple of those denominators are going to be 0. We're going to have some undefined expressions. So x equals 2, that right there is not in the domain. So it's an extraneous solution, in other words. So, oops, I lost the ability to write. Extraneous solution. So what our solution actually is, is the empty set. So either that way or the more literal empty set of two brackets with nothing in between them. The one thing that we got that looked like a solution was outside the domain, which means we're left with nothing. So the solution is the empty set here. Um, and that can happen, right? I mean, once in a while, you're going to get things like that. Um, so then five must be the quadratic. All right. Well, that is true. I can see where it shows up. It's actually going to come from that second term. I think. Yeah. Um, all right. So there, um, once again, we've got the one denominator that's the product of the other two. Since x squared plus 5x minus 14 is x plus 7 times x minus 2. So I guess we could jump right ahead to the domain and say that the domain here would be the set of all x such that x is not equal to 2 and x is not equal to negative 7. Right? Those are going to be the numbers that cause trouble. And then since this right here is really x plus 7 times x minus 2, then it looks like our least common denominator is just x plus 7 times x minus 2. All right, I'll just write that down over here. All right, and then if we're going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator. So, all right, x plus 7 times x minus 2 times 3 over x minus 2 minus x plus 7 times x minus 2 times 3x over x plus 7. That's going to be equal to x plus 7 times x minus 2 times 5x plus 17 over x plus 7 times x minus 2. And then we should get a bunch of cancellation here. Right, so it looks like then in the first expression, that first product, we get the x minus 2s. Second one, we get the x plus 7s. Other side, we get everything. So let's see what we've got. We've got 3 times x plus 7 minus 3x times x minus 2. And that's going to be equal to 5x plus 17. Okay. Let's see then it distributing. So distributing the 3, we'll get 3x plus 21. And then minus what you get when you distribute the 3x. That would be 3x squared minus 6x. And then we still got the 5x plus 17 on the other side. All right, then distributing the negative. So 3x plus 21 minus 3x squared plus 6x equals 5x plus 17. All right, so I'm going to write the left side um, to where the x squared term goes first. Then there are two x terms, so 3 plus 6 is 9x. Then plus 21 would be equal to 5x plus 17. All right, well then, if we're going to try to solve this, it seems like it would help to get a 0 on one side. So we'll just do both subtractions at once. So minus 5x minus 17, 
That'll give us a zero on the right. And we're going to get negative 3x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals zero. All right, so this is going to be easier to solve with a positive leading coefficient. So a positive coefficient on the x squared. So I'm just going to rewrite what we had at the bottom there and then basically fix it. So minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Um, I guess you could look at this in one of two ways. Either that what you could do is factor a negative 1 out of the left side, um, and then you could use a zero product property, and then you'd say, well, the negative 1 can't be 0, so it's got to be the other thing. Or you could multiply both sides by negative 1. Since we don't usually do it that way, I'm going to do it that way this time just to kind of change things up a little. So negative one times negative three x squared plus four x plus four equals negative one times zero. So then we're gonna have three x squared minus four x minus four equals zero. And this does factor because it's in chapter five, so therefore it's before chapter seven which has the quadratic formula and um, completing the square and all that stuff. So let's see, it looks like what we're gonna need is minus four there and plus four there. Or, or no, wait, 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 minus two and plus two. Yeah, I'm turning that into a 16. I don't wanna do that. Um, there we go. Because then with the outer and inner products, we'll get minus 6x plus 2x. All right, so that looks good. All right, so then you could use a zero product property and say 3x plus 2 equals zero. That would give you that x would have to be negative 2 thirds. And then if x minus 2 equals zero, that would tell you that x has to be 2. However, 2, once again, is outside the domain, so we've got to throw that out. The negative 2 thirds is all right. The only two things that we would have to throw out if they came up would be two and negative seven. So we gotta throw out that two. That negative two thirds, that's totally fine. So this right here is not in the domain. So it's an extraneous solution. And that means that what our solution actually is, and I'll just write, go ahead and write this in red. Um, the solution is just the negative two thirds. So the solution is just going to be the set consisting of negative two-thirds, and that's that. So had to throw out the two, but we could keep the negative two-thirds this time. And yes, there's a quadratic equation, but since this is right after chapter four in our book, and chapter four has all the factoring stuff, they tend to be ones that you can factor when you get the quadratic equations which will happen once or twice on the homework for section 5.4. Um, let's see, then this last one, um, the concentration C of a drug in a patient's bloodstream T hours after ingestion is given by that equation. Um, so when will the concentration of the drug be five milligrams per liter? Um, so basically what we're looking for is, basically, I guess it's what is, T when C of T equals five, right? That's basically what we're being asked um, if you just um, kind of take the context out. Um, so then what we're gonna do is we're going to set C of T equal to five and then solve for t. Okay, first things first. Um, are there going to be any restrictions? Not this time, because that denominator can't be zero. So there are actually going to be no domain restrictions, since it's, it's a t squared plus 25. So t squared can't be less than zero. Right? If you square zero, you get zero. If you square anything else, you get a positive number. So that means that that whole expression in the denominator, the t squared plus 25, 
that can't be less than 25. So therefore, it can't be zero. Um, and so we're not really going to have anything to worry about. Um, so, all right. Well, then we can just go ahead and do this. So we're going to set um, C of T equal to 5. So we'll have 50T over T squared plus 25. That's going to be equal to 5. And then we just have to solve that. Um, I guess we're going to clear the denominator, but there's only one denominator. So getting the least common denominator, it's just that, right? So we're going to um, multiply both sides by t squared plus 25. And if we do that, we're going to have t squared plus 25 times 50t over t squared plus 25. That's going to be equal to t squared plus 25 times 5. All right, so we'll get some cancellation on the left because we can cancel the t squared plus 25 on the left side. So that means that what we're going to end up with is a 50t on the left. And then I guess on the right, we could distribute the 5 and say that'll be 5t squared plus 125. Right, that's what 25 times 5 is. Um, and then from there, we ought to be good to go, right? Um, so then probably easier just to move the 50t. So if I subtract 50t from both sides, we'll get that 0 is equal to 5t squared minus 50t plus 125. However, there is a common factor on the right since all those numbers are divisible by 5. So if I factor out the 5, I'd be left with t squared minus 10t plus 25. And the thing that's in parentheses is actually a perfect square trinomial. Since that's t minus 5 quantity squared or t minus 5 times t minus 5, which you could then rewrite. And that actually might be better. So I'll, I'll write it with an intermediate step like that, where we have it as t minus 5 times t minus 5, or 0 equals 5 times t minus 5 quantity squared. But if we're using the zero product property, the 5 can't be 0. So it would have to be the t minus 5 squared, right? So. 0 would be equal to t minus 5 squared. But in order to get that t minus 5 squared to be 0, t minus 5 itself has to be 0. So that means that t would have to be 5. right? So 5 equals t. Um, so then the answer would be 5 hours after ingestion. All right, so I think that would cover everything in 5.4. Um, so at least with 5.4, um, even though there are some variations and you got to watch out for extraneous solutions, um, at least what you end up doing to solve the problems stays pretty consistent, right? That's a good thing. So um, even though there are like little wrinkles, it's always the same general procedure, which I think is helpful.